Support for LAS comes from Casa of Los Angeles, a nonprofit organization working one on one with children in the child welfare system to ensure they have support in education, health care, and housing. Just showing up is extraordinary. More at CasaLA.org. Support for LAS comes from the Soraya at Cal State Northridge, presenting the world premiere of Diavolo's Existencia, January 17th and 19th. Using aerial dance and architecture, Diavolo and the Soraya join forces to commemorate 30 years since the Northridge earthquake. More at thesoraya.org. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report, are you vaccinated against COVID-19? Case counts are going up. LA senior health reporter Jackie Fortier has been watching the numbers climb. She's got a report. California has released its annual numbers on police stops across the state, and they show a troubling trend. And we have bug news that'll bug you, especially if you grow fruit in your backyard. It's Thursday, January 4th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the L.A. Report from L.A. at State 89.3. Doctors are bracing for more COVID-19 patients as we all return to work and school after the holiday break. L.A.'s senior health reporter Jackie Fortier has been examining the latest case numbers. Testing wastewater for coronavirus is the best metric we have to estimate how much virus is circulating. The level of coronavirus in L.A. County's wastewater has risen to about half of last winter's peak. That's up 13 percent from three weeks ago. Orange County pediatrician Eric Ball is seeing the highest number of kids testing positive with COVID in his practice since last winter. We don't have very high vaccine rates. So we don't have a lot of kids who have a lot of protection against COVID. We really have no medications to treat COVID for children. So we do worry a little bit more when kids get COVID, especially kids who have not been vaccinated, because some of them do get quite ill. Babies six months and older can get vaccinated. And Ball says even though we're in the middle of a surge, it's not too late to get them immunized. Public health officials advise using rapid tests if you feel sick before returning to work and school, as cases are expected to rise. For LAist 89.3, I'm Jackie Fortier. State lawmakers are back at work in Sacramento for a new session with an old problem, a big state budget deficit. By some estimates, as much as $68 billion in the red. Budget deficits are actually a problem the legislature used to face regularly a decade or so ago. But Laura Cordy with Politico, who covers Sacramento, says... Lawmakers haven't had to deal with deficits in recent years. In previous years, we had, you know, huge surpluses up to $100 billion. And those were the glory years, you know, when people got their pets, pet projects funded and there was no concerns about programs being cut. But, you know, the real issue this year is going to be what's, you know, going to be saved and what's going to be cut and what's going to be delayed. Laura Cordy with Politico. Next week, Governor Gavin Newsom will release his proposed state budget. Even that might not tell us much. The governor and the legislature won't know for sure how much money the state can spend until April when the Department of Finance sees what tax revenue has come in. And then comes the governor's revised budget in May and the final arm wrestling in June over which programs get how much. California has released its annual data on police stops across the state. LAist reporter Yusra Farzan says the numbers show what the state report calls a pervasive pattern of racial profiling by officers and deputies in the field. California's Department of Justice found black people made up only 5% of the state's population but accounted for nearly 13% of police stops. In Los Angeles, the gap is wider. They made up less than 10% of the city's population but accounted for nearly 25% of police stops. That's according to LAPD data in 2022. Authors of the state's Racial and Identity Profiling Advisory report say it's the first time they've included numbers from all law enforcement agencies statewide. The report outlined recommendations to address racial profiling during stops. They called for an end to pretextual stops and a reduction in police intervention during a mental health crisis. For LA's 89.3, I'm Yusra Farazan. When we come back, we have bug news that'll bug you, especially if you grow fruit in your backyard.
Support for Elias comes from Casa of Los Angeles, a nonprofit organization that organizes community volunteers to take action and advocate for children and families in LA County's overburdened child welfare and juvenile justice systems. Casa LA works to strengthen the community by ensuring that all children and families have equitable access to resources and support to thrive. Just showing up is extraordinary. You can learn how to make a difference in a child's life who needs Casa support at casala.org. Support for this LAist podcast comes from the Soraya at Cal State Northridge and the Jazz at Naz Festival. Legendary trumpeter and Tijuana brass founder Herb Alpert and his wife, two-time Grammy winner Lonnie Hall, celebrate their golden anniversary, 50 years married, performing greatest hits from their solo careers, their latest work, and more on January 27th. Learn more at thesoraya.org. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. The U.S. Labor Department says it has secured the largest settlement to date over unpaid overtime. It says 165 garment workers in Los Angeles will divvy up more than a million dollars from clothing contractor Good Cash LLC and three partner businesses. Labor Department inspectors say their workers clocked in an average of 52 hours a week but got paid for only 40. Labor Department attorney Carrie Pancione says the businesses also went to great lengths to avoid getting caught. They actually turned off the power to the facility and and told the employees to leave and they all rushed out of the building. So, you know, it's just sort of shocking to see that level of um, avoidance. A 2023 Labor Department study says about 80 percent of garment workers in Los Angeles have been exploited in some way. Back in October, agricultural inspectors found a couple of Mediterranean fruit flies near L.A.'s Lemert Park, and a fruit fly quarantine quickly followed. Well, now a pest from down under in Australia that's already shown up in Ventura County is now showing up in more of Ventura County. The story from L.A.'s reporter McKenna Sievertson. Queensland fruit flies are about the size of a pencil eraser, but these small bugs can cause big trouble for produce. State officials say their larvae can infect a lot of crops like stone fruits, avocados, and melons, and turn them into a rotten mess. They're also warning about a serious plant disease known as citrus greening. Infected trees will produce deformed fruits until they eventually die, and there is no cure. Ventura County posted an urgent agricultural alert on Wednesday, warning people not to share or move their homegrown produce because of these pesky pests. And if you think your plants might be infected, make sure to report it to the state right away. For LAS 89.3, I'm McKenna Sievertson. Thanks for listening to the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow morning when Suzanne Watley brings you the L.A. Report AM edition. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujiea. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, the director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the LA Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live.